Hi, this is Anna Troglin, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to draw a dog using soft pastels and Conti crayons together. Let's get started. Today's dog is going to be the Intelbucher Mountain Dog, which looks a lot like the Bernese Mountain Dog, only with a short coat. So we're talking about a big dog that is a herding type dog, and when we look at our dogs before we even start, we need to understand form over function. So this dog is going to be able to herd large animals and make them go where he needs them to go. So he's not gonna be a little wimpy dog. He's also not gonna be a big bulky dog because then he would not have the speed that he needs. Let's take a look at this dog. Now, when I start a dog in pastels, I always choose a light colored pastel to do the outline of the big shapes first because that way we can wipe away the outline and work over the outline too. So here's our dog. Let's get started with some loose shapes. This particular dog is close to this side of the page, so we're going to try and do that too. So as you can see, I'm not drawing details in, I'm just throwing together the general shape so we know what we have to work with here. And our hind paws are very close to the back. We don't hardly see them at all, but there they are. So here's the chest of the dog and the slope on either side as he comes down. We see a little roll of muscle at the top right here and here. Now let's put in those ears and the shape of the head because that will be very important. We want the head to be sufficiently big that it looks like there's a capacity for a brain inside the head. I've been told that that's not actually the theory when it comes to dinosaurs though. They had very small brains and they were very large. Very little different than drawing a dog. Put in the head, we see it's basically an oval shape. Now we're gonna put our nose in here to ground the whole thing. It's quite a large nose. And here's his lips, and here's his bottom lip. Now we see that the face is divided like this and this. And the eyes are right in the middle of the head directly in the middle of the head. They come equal distant from each other. Now this type of head is called a mesocephalic head and that means that the head is equally wide as it is long. It's perfectly balanced. Some other mesocephalic dogs are Labrador Retrievers. So here's a little color that goes here and here and then up. There's a crease through the ear. This ear goes out like this. We have the eyebrows. Let's stop and take a moment to see if we've got our proportions right. So here's our picture and here's our drawing. It looks pretty balanced to me. Let's keep going with what we have. Now down here there's going to be some color. That hind paw is going to come up like this. Looks like there's going to be a little bit of that orange here and here, and then this whole area here is going to be white. We'll add a little white to it, but we're not going to worry too much about the white because the white of the page will help do that for us. Okay, looks like it's time to start adding some color, so let's find a good color. In the Conti crayons, I see right away good color. It may be a little too orange. Let's find one that's a little less orange. How about this one? You wanna always match your color directly to the photo. I'm not able to show that perfectly, which I wish I could. Actually hold your color up to the thing that you're drawing and see how if it blends in with the color you know you've got the right color. 
and this forms the bottom of the muzzle and then it comes around like this and then over on this side we have some of this just a little showing and the muzzle is going to show right here very nice if I do say so myself down here we've got a little bit of that orange there and a little bit of orange like that here now one of my great teachers told me years ago that when it comes to drawing a picture it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be a good picture so don't get too hung up on making your picture look like the photograph you're an artist and you have artistic license and you can draw your dog however you would like even if it does not look like my dog that's okay. The most important thing you can do as an artist is be happy with your work. That's your goal. When you're happy with your work, everyone else is happy with your work. And it's a good thing. Looks like we have a lot of black here that we have to deal with. So let's go with the pastel black because it's smoother and easier to put on and rub in than the Conti Crayon. This looks like a dark gray. Let's go with an actual black. And here it is. Ta-da! Let's black stuff in now. So we know where the white areas are. There's a lot of black on this dog. So we will fill it in. And it looks like there's some black right up here. Almost like a little hat. And this goes around like this. And here we are coming down into the face on this side. So let's scrub this in. We're doing great. Here we go. And around like that. And like that. There we go. Continuing filling in this dog. There's some black here too. It's like those ears are pretty universally black. Now we did leave an area that was lighter in there. So let's do that again. And when we come to rub this down, we'll leave those light areas in. Forget the eyes. Here's the nose. Now, as you can see, my pastel is very blunt and it's very soft. It's very different than the Conti crayons. They're better for detail. A little roll of muscle up here. Always start at the edge of where the color begins. Make an outline and then fill it in. Don't fill it in randomly. You won't know where you're going with it that way. You can see this is a very solidly built dog that doesn't take nonsense from anyone. But now is the time to do a little rubbing. Now there's 
other reasons besides rubbing this to make it look pretty. You're also rubbing it because this is kind of a messy medium. We call this a medium. When you draw with this particular medium with pastels, you're looking at a lot of dust. Try to keep your area as well ventilated as you can. You can see I'm actually drawing under an open window. So one artist I would suggest if you like the style is Claire Newberry, who the Newberry Awards are named after. She used charcoal. She also used watercolors. I think you'd like her work. Now we're going to be very careful and wipe our hands off. Again, on the smock. That's why we're wearing a smock. And now we're going to blend the orange areas. But before we go in and blend the orange areas, we're going to darken them a little bit to make them stand out more. Alright, let's use a black comfy crayon to fill in around the white areas now. Now up here, we see that it's not a solid line. It's feathered. You see the fur there. This is a sort of a neat detail that you can put in that will make your picture look exceptionally professional and good. We're going to fill in that nose. The line right down the middle of that nose. We're going to fill out around it, making sure to keep the top of the nose lighter. And we want to fill in those nostrils. And here we make the line nice and furry. In drawing animals, it's always important to remember, unless you're drawing a hairless animal, that there aren't any smooth, straight lines on an animal. There's always some kind of jagged fur situation going around the edges. Some dogs more than others. There we go. And then on the chest. Now, you see how the fur comes down like this over the bone underneath it, which is called the sternum. And the way the fur feathers like that really defines the sternum. And then below that is the edge of the rib cage. And below that is the bottom of the chest where the ribs come into play. We're gonna feather that a little bit, because that's important. And this goes through like this, and this like this. Now let's look at the bottom of our page, the area that's not so easy to see. Remember that we marked out where those paws and toes went when we use the pastel, and now we see visually that the leg is longer and the paw is bigger. And so 
we're going to make it match and make it longer. Let's make sure these paws come down the equal lengths. There we go. And the comfy crayon is getting soft too and needs to be sharpened somewhat. But that's for another day. And there's the other paw just peeking through. Now there's one more thing we want to do with this dog before we finish our picture. And that is to add a little extra color. Blue and black always look very nice together. And actually, when we're looking at this color, which is an orange, we know that orange is made up of red and yellow. So the complementary color on this is going to be blue. We call that the complementary color. And we're gonna use a blue Conti crayon because we can get more detail with that. We're gonna set aside our photo and add that blue in, which is not actually in the photo. So we just wanna add just enough to make that black really pop. There's the bottom of the ear. Here's the face coming around the ear. And here's another bottom of the ear on this side. Go through like this. And you can see that this is not ruining the picture, but is actually accenting what we have. So we always would want to go with blue. Oh, we didn't fill in the iris. Let's fill that in. I think we should fill it in the same color as the orange fur. Does that make sense? And we'll put a little touch of blue in there around the black. Just enough to make it pop. And we're going to come down like this. We can scrub because that's black and it's not going to show up very much. Ordinarily, it's not a good idea to scrub with your utensils. Whether you're using paint or pastels or anything that you could scrub at, don't do it. And there we have it. So what are we going to do now? We're going to do the most important thing that an artist can do at the end of a drawing. We're going to sign it. Where are we going to sign it? Well, we should sign it somewhere where it blends in and doesn't look like it's part of the picture. So let's add it. Look, there's already a blur here. This is a good place to put your signature and blend over it and have it not look like a mistake. There's my initials. And that's how I do it. And we're done. Thank you so much for sitting with me as we draw this dog. I hope you have a wonderful day.